I'm anointed by God to teach the word. I'm his child. I'm called by God. And God's anointing gives me the authority that I need to do what I'm doing. You a lie. You a lie. God ain't never told a woman to do something that contradict that fight. That's right. Man. Never. Don't get on social media and say something bad about somebody else. You don't even need to give your opinion about somebody else on social media. When a woman says she's a preacher, you a liar. That's a lie. Every woman that says God calls oh, and sent her to preach the gospel, right. Joyce Myers, that goes Joyce you. Myers. There's something wrong, deeply wrong inside somebody when they have to say something like that, especially with that kind of a tone. And when you start hearing that kind of stuff from Christians, that's a good indication from somebody that you don't want to spend a lot of time with and you need to get away from. The debate between Joyce Mayer and Gino Jennings underscores the long-standing theological conflict regarding the roles of women in ministry. Here are some key points and perspectives from both sides. Gino Jennings emphasizes traditional interpretations of scripture that he believes clearly state that women should not preach. He cites passages such as John 3.34 and 1 Timothy 2.12, which he interprets as directives that only men are called to preach. Gino Jennings argues that adhering to these scriptures is essential for maintaining the integrity and order established by God. He believes that allowing women to preach contradicts the Bible and disrupts the divine hierarchy within the church. Gino Jennings points out that Jesus' disciples and the early church leaders were all men, suggesting a precedent for male, only preachers. Gino Jennings criticizes Joyce Mayer for promoting the prosperity gospel, arguing that it distorts the true message of Christianity and prioritizes material wealth over spiritual growth. She said God told her, I want you just to serve me with gladness. Just serve me with gladness. And so perhaps there are even people that God wants to station throughout the body of Christ that just are one of those kind of people. They're just, they're just there to be an uplifter and an encourager and to, to give an example of being content. You know, God uses us in so many different ways. And I hope that you're past the thinking that if you're not on a platform somewhere, then you're not being used by God. Because to be honest, most of the work that needs to be done and is done out in the world is done one-on-one -on -one by people that are out there on their jobs, in the marketplace, in the store. Most of the people that need help are not coming to church. I mean, now, I'm sure we all need help in here today, but most of the people that are a lot more desperate for help than you are are out there. They didn't know to come in here today. So we come together like this to learn and grow so we can then go out and be the witnesses that Christ wants us to be to change the world. Every single Christian is called into ministry. Every single one of you are called into ministry. We all have the ministry of intercession. It's our ministry to pray for other people. And we all have the ministry of reconciliation, the Bible says, which is being that go-between that helps to bring reconciliation between the lost and God. So you all have a ministry, finding out the particular way that God wants you to manifest that ministry may be one thing, more than likely it's gonna be several things, but I stop by saying that the only way you're ever gonna find out is to step out and find out. Don't be afraid to try things. It won't take very long and you'll know if it's just something that you can do or if it's the thing that God wants you to do. Joyce Meyer asserts that her calling to preach is based on a personal divine encounter. She believes that God spoke directly to her heart, affirming her mission to spread his word. Mayer and her supporters argue that Jennings' interpretation of the Bible is too rigid and fails to consider the cultural context and broader messages of equality and inclusion found throughout Scripture. 
Despite criticism, Mayer highlights the positive impact of her ministry, which has helped countless individuals find hope and empowerment through her teachings. She believes her success is a testament to God's grace. Mayer argues that women can bring diverse gifts and callings to the church. She sees her ministry as breaking down outdated and restrictive views on gender roles in the church. Matthew 7, 13 and 14, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and spacious and broad is the way that leads away to destruction, and many are those who are entering through it. The wide gate, you know why many enter there? Because that's easy. It doesn't take any effort. You got lots of company on the wide road. It's easy to walk on. You can do what you want to, do what you feel like. Take all your fleshly baggage with you. There's room for all that. But the gate is narrow. Now look here. Contracted by pressure. And the way is straightened and compressed that leads away to life. And few are those who find it. You know, even among preachers, we all have something, I think, that we're especially called by God to focus on. And for me, it's always been spiritual maturity. It's always wanting to help the believer mature and be transformed into the image of Christ so they can really enjoy the life that Jesus died to give them. He didn't die for us just so we could someday go to the sweet by and by and live in our nice little mansion in heaven. I'm looking forward to that, looking forward to eternity, being with God. The older I get, the more I look forward to it. <laughs> but how many of you want to enjoy the journey? And how many of you want to be fruit, fruitful on the journey? You want to take a few people with you. Let's don't just be around people all the time and let them go to hell by the dozens, but let's be an example to people and give them, let's be the kind of people that are salty. The Bible says we're salt and light, and salt makes you thirsty. So if we're good and salty, then other people are going to get thirsty for what we have. Amen. This debate reflects a broader tension within Christianity between traditionalist and progressive interpretations of Scripture regarding gender roles in ministry. Both sides emphasize the importance of adhering to the Bible, but they differ on how to interpret specific passages related to women preaching. The differing views of Mayer and Jennings influence their followers shaping their understanding of gender roles in ministry and broader Christian practice. The discussion between Joyce Mayer and Gino Jennings highlights significant theological and interpretative differences within Christianity regarding women's roles in ministry. Each side presents compelling arguments based on their understanding of Scripture and their personal convictions. The debate underscores the importance of seeking a balanced approach that respects biblical authority while also considering the evolving cultural and societal contexts in which these teachings are applied.